the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me and sent me to preach the good news to the poor, to heal the broken-hearted. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. You're very welcome to Mass today on the patronal feast of the parish of St. Vincent de Paul himself, and to bring the message home to us, we've even got a relic, so he's very near to us today, a relic of St. Vincent de Paul here on the altar for this Mass. So, to prepare ourselves to celebrate Mass today, we call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who for the relief of the poor and the formation of the clergy endowed the priest St. Vincent de Paul with apostolic virtues, grant, we pray, that afire with that same spirit we may love what he loved and put into practice what he taught. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Take yourselves, brothers, at the time when you were called. How many of you were wise in the ordinary sense of the word? How many were influential people or came from noble families? No, it was to shame the wise that God chose what is foolish by human reckoning, and to shame what is strong that he chose what is weak by human reckoning. Those whom the world thinks common and contemptible are the ones that God has chosen those who are nothing at all, to show up those who are everything. The human race has nothing to boast about to God, but you, God, has made members of Christ Jesus, and by God's doing, he has become our wisdom, and our virtue, and our holiness, and our freedom. As scripture says, if anyone wants to boast, let him boast about the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. 
Happy the man who fears the Lord. Happy the man who fears the Lord, who takes delight in his commands. His sons will be powerful on earth. The children of the upright are blessed. Riches and wealth are in his house. His justice stands firm forever. He is a light in the darkness for the upright. He is generous, merciful, and just. The good man takes pity and lends. He conducts his affairs with honor. The just man will never waver. He will be remembered forever. He has no fear of evil news. With a firm heart, he trusts in the Lord. With a steadfast heart, he will not fear. He will see the downfall of his foes. Open-handed, he gives to the poor. His justice stands firm forever. His head will be raised in glory. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my own sheep, and my own know me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus made a tour through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing all kinds of diseases and sickness. And when he saw the crowd, he felt sorry for them because they were harassed and dejected like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is rich, but the laborers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers to his harvest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Vincent de Paul was born in 1581 in France. At the exceptionally young age of 19, he was ordained a priest in 1600, and he subsequently attended the University of Toulouse. In 1605, five years after he was ordained, whilst travelling by sea, he was captured by Turkish Mohammedan pirates and taken into slavery. He spent two and a half years as a slave, finally escaping in 1607 with the help of his owner, whom he had actually converted to Christianity. Vincent decided to devote his life to charitable work and he was appointed a parish police of Clichy, which, if you know Par Paris, it's a suburb of Paris. And after only two years there, he was asked to be chaplain and teacher to the household of the Count of Gondi, since the Count was in charge of ships. Vincent got an opportunity to see the plight of the galley slaves. So he sought to relieve their terrible conditions by offering them not just material assistance, but spiritual assistance as well. Uh, he actually ransomed 1,200 of those slaves from North Africa. Back in Paris, after the leaving of the Gandhi family, he established confraternities of men and women working to bring charity to the poor and to care for the vast numbers of sick in the city. His chief source of charitable donations and concerns came from wealthy noble women who provided funds for the creation of hospitals and homes for orphaned and foundling children. That's why St. Vincent over there has a little child in his arms. These became known as the Ladies of Charity. A practical man, Vincent's work went practically unnoticed by the wealthy who chose to ignore the problems of the time 
and even the poor themselves who didn't appreciate what he was doing for them. But he didn't throw in the towel and go off in a huff. To advance his efforts even further, Vincent founded in Paris in 1625 the Congregation of the Missions called the Lazarites, because it was founded at St. Lazare in Paris, or the Vincentians. You know them better as the Vincentians, but they had different names. And they were a society of priests with the express task of missionary labor and the training of the clergy. He was zealous in conducting retreats for clergy at a time when there was great laxity, abuse, and ignorance among them. St. Vincent's Sheffield, the parish you're in now, was the first English foundation. They came here from Ireland in 1853. In 1633, with the remarkable St. Louise de Marillac, he also established the Daughters or Sisters of Charity, the first congregation of women caring for the sick and poor outside the confines of the convent. He said that their convent is the sick room, their chapel is the parish church, their cloister is the streets of the city. Vincent also organized relief efforts for the many unfortunate victims injured and wounded in wars which France was involved in around the middle of the 17th century. Vincent was a bitter opponent of the heresy called Jansenism, which was rampant in France at the time. Jansenism had the idea that the body was bad and that the soul was good and that the soul was sort of imprisoned in the body. Whereas we know now that not just your soul, but your body is also sacred. And Vincent de Paul was streets or years ahead of his time, centuries ahead of his time, when he really did look after people's bodies as well as their souls. <coughs> Jansenism was Calvinistic in tone. And as you know, the Calvinists were, went to Scotland and when they went over to Ireland, uh, it's kind of Calvinism which was partly responsible for all those years of turbulence in Northern Ireland because they regarded themselves as an elite group, the Calvinists, and they were the only ones who were going to be saved. So it kind of infiltrated even political life. But St. Vincent de Paul was bitterly opposed to it. Vincent died in Paris on the 27th of September, today's feast, of course, 1660, at the age of 80, and he was canonized a saint by Pope Clement XIII in 1737. Most remarkably, Vincent was by temperament a very short-tempered person. Even his friends admitted it. He said, and this is his conversion really, he said, that except for the grace of God, he would have been hard and repulsive, rough and cross. But he became a tender and very affectionate man, very sensitive to the needs of others. Pope Leo XIII made him the patron of all charitable societies. Outstanding, of course, among these are, of course, the Society of St. Vincent de Paul, which we have here, founded in 1833 by his admirer, Blessed Frederick Ozenham. St. Vincent de Paul. Let us acknowledge the love and mercy of God who hears our prayers and has pity on us. 
God sent his Son into the world to preach the good news to the poor. Let us pray that the Church may always be faithful in following Christ in this task. Lord, hear us. Lord, the Spirit of God comes to renew the face of the earth. Let us pray that we may work together in our country to achieve justice, charity and peace for all. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. St. Vincent de Paul worked for the training of holy priests in the church. Let us pray for all priests, deacons and seminarians that they be faithful to their vocation and care for the poor entrusted to them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Our Lord said, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Let us pray for those who serve the poor, the sick and the needy in our parish, remembering especially the Society of St. Vincent de Paul and those who support it. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Are not the poor the suffering members of our Lord, said St. Vincent? They have been given to us as our masters and patrons. Let us pray for the compassionate hearts to seek out the poor and needy, to comfort them with devoted care and give them the help they need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father in heaven, you have taught us in Lord our God, Lord, you endowed St. Vincent de Paul with a wonderful gift of mercy. May we follow his example and experience your mercy in our lives through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who enabled St. Vincent to imitate what he celebrates in the divine mysteries, grant that by the power of this sacrifice we too may be transformed into an oblation acceptable to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Vincent de Paul you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. 
And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we've brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Vincent de Paul, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim and church on earth, which your servant Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. You should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let them thank the Lord for his mercy, his wonders for the children of men. For he satisfies the thirsty soul, and the hungry he fills with good things. Body of Christ.
Renewed by this heavenly sacrament, O Lord, we implore that just as we are prompted by St. Vincent's example to imitate your Son in the preaching of the gospel to the poor, so too we may be sustained by his prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Amen after each of these. May God the glory and joy of the saints who has caused you to be strengthened by means of their outstanding prayers bless you with unending blessings Amen. freed from their intercession from present ills and formed by the example of their holy way of life may you be ever devoted to serving God and your neighbor Amen. So that together with all you may possess the joys of the homeland where Holy Church rejoices that our children are admitted in perpetual peace to the company of the citizens of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you all and remain with you always. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thank you all for listening and God bless you all.